So, Daniel Slas, mm -hmm. nice to have you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for accepting the interview. Uh, you're going on stage in uh, almost an hour, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, Kai, I'll be on stage in about an hour and a half. Kai's on mm -hmm. in an hour. And then I'll ah, you have an opener? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kai, he's, um, he's open for me for the past mm -hmm. seven years now. So we've done seven UK tours, and this is our fourth European okay. all over one. Um, just because at this stage, my audience know him as well as they know me. So, Where have you been? Um, we started in, uh, we went from Prague to Austria, to Bratislava, to Belgrade, to Ljubljana. And then we were in Zagreb last night. Cluj today, Sofia tomorrow, Copenhagen, uh, Sweden, <laughs> Norway, um, Iceland, and then Amsterdam. And then a bunch more, but that's as far as my memory goes. Quite a few countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, yeah, but it's, 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 it's fucking ridiculous. Like you go to places you've never been before and there's an audience there. And it's just that thing, they're so surprised that you've come out to do comedy. So they're like, why are you here? But we feel like asking them the same questions. <laughs> like you go to you know, Prague and there's 300 people and you come to uh, Cluj where there's 300 people. And you're like, who the fuck are you people? <laughs> like, how the fuck do you? Yeah, it's the internet. Yeah, it all is, yeah. Everybody has access to comedy mm. right now. Have you changed anything for today's, tonight's set list? How do you adapt it for this, maybe for tonight? Do you change anything? Are there any obscure references that you avoid, that you usually do in UK? Yeah, there's sometimes, if there's a reference the audience don't get, I'll, I'll try and explain it to them, because sometimes that works. Um, but my show changes as I tour anyway, because you know I had a 20 minute routine about a television show in the UK, and I tried doing it for like two days over here. And it went fine, but you know the explanation w wasn't worth um, the punchlines at that point. Um, but because I had to also have to sort of naturally just slow down delivery just that little bit more, it means that the show is still the same length. And also because I'm doing it so much slower than I have, uh, I'm actually discovering more jokes and other routines and stuff. So all the other bits have naturally sort of become longer. Okay. Okay. How much do you have right now? How much will you do tonight? Uh, between 75 minutes and an hour and a half, depending on how much they laugh. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean, it started, it, it started as an hour long show um, during the Edinburgh Festival. And then and by the time it was on tour, I had to cut out a routine because it was then running at 75. It's very weird. The more jokes I cut out, the longer the show gets because the more they laugh at something, that's the joke I'll do more work on because like clearly mm -hmm. That's the... Yeah, you op optimize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, yeah. every show. And the joke naturally just gets bigger. Like, if, if they laugh for like an extra four seconds, that's four seconds when my brain is, you know, I've got freedom to just go wherever I want. And also, you know, I can just throw out a shitty one-liner and if it doesn't land, it doesn't matter because they're, you know, still laughing. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what I much prefer about, you know, touring out here because it just, the show's already good, but then... You know, I, I made the show one way and then the audience sort of let it sort of mold another way. Mm -hmm. I, I saw you actually did a, a show each year in Edinburgh starting in uh, 2007, 2008, something like yeah, that. Yeah, this is my uh, ninth solo show. How, how can you write that, that much? Just what? fucking hate everything. You, you hate everything? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, yeah it, it, that makes it easier, I think. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very happy person. My stage persona doesn't give that off. Um, I, I, I talk about that on stage. But yeah, I, I, I get bored of my own jokes, um, you know, because by the time I've done a tour, I've done it 30 times during the Edinburgh Festival. Mm -hmm. And then I take on tour and I've done it about 70 or 80 times then. And then I take it to America and Australia. So by May next year, I'll have done it 150 times and I'm fucking bored of it. Like, because it comes to the point, you know, it's still fun just now mm -hmm. because so many jokes are changing and it's naturally growing and I'm still enjoying performing it. Like, you know, there's characters in each joke that I'm still discovering and working out how they get laughs. 
But by the time you get to 140, you're like, right, this show is very much done. When you get to 130, you stop and you write, and then you try and grow a new no, hour, a just, whole new hour. Just yeah, right. drop it all dead. I, fil I film it and then never, never do it again. Okay. Um, just because that's like, that was always the advice like George Carlin and Louis C.K. and Bill Burr gave. You know, if you talk to them in interviews, they would always do a new hour every year. Same with Jim Jeffries. And like, if all the greats are doing it, yeah. there's, there's, that, that must be the secret. Except Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld, he thinks the, quite, quite the opposite. Yeah, he yeah, always says, yeah, hey, I'm going to do the, that joke. People want to hear that joke. Why, why should I give him the best I can give him? Well, because with, with, with Seinfeld, though, Seinfeld is a, is a joke teller. Like he's a, he, not necessarily a one-liner. But he's, you know, it's jokes, it's bits. Every routine of his is three or four minutes long. Then there's a new bit. Like, Seinfeld does bits. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you look at Louis C.K. or Bill Burr or Jim Jeffries, um, their bits are, you know, 20 minutes long. It's, 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 it's the same. It's like a story and it all ties together. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't fucking write as many new jokes as Seinfeld does. That's why, because my show is technically only four jokes. Like it's, you know, I talk about uh, the news and then I talk about a sociopath test and then I talk about dick pics and then I talk about pedos. Like those are the four jokes. Pedos? Pedos, yeah, yeah. Um, those are the four jokes. I mean, there's obviously loads more jokes yeah, yeah, in those. Four biggest bits, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, Louis C.K., George Carlin, uh, Bill Burr. Who, you, who influenced you most? Um, when I was, what comedian do you like most? What comedians do you like most? I, uh, I guess is isn't just one. Yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I loved um, Ed Byrne. He's an Irish comedian. He was one I loved as a kid. Same with um, Lee Evans and uh, Dylan Moran, uh, Sarah Millican, and those were the ones, British comics that I loved watching. And then in more recent years, it's Bill Burr I love. Um, Jim Jeffries, I'm a big fan of. Bo Burnham is another one. Very different to what I do, but I just think Bo Burnham's a... He's also a prodigy, young, uh, yeah, a young man. But he's... Yeah, Bo Burnham is the reason I'll never be the greatest comedian my age. <laughs> like, there's one, month of the, there's one month of the year, every year, when I'm the greatest comedian my age. And then I turn the same age Bo Burnham does, and it's 11 months of being like, ah, right, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I can't believe how, uh, how good he is for... It's you actually started really, really early. You, you, you started doing... 16, yeah, 16, 17. 16, 17 years. Did you do a class, a comedy class uh, before you? Oh, there was something yeah. like, I read something like yeah, that. It was, that didn't it, this doesn't, doesn't affect no. at all. No. It, the only thing the comedy class did was teach me that comedy classes are bullshit. And, uh, and it got me a gig. Like, I, I think for some people it's, comedy classes can be good, but I went in there, I've watched stand-up since I was five years old. Like, I, I, I watch it all of the time. Um, and I've done acting and, st and stage stuff before. So when I go to the comedy class, they were sort of teaching you about, you know, mic technique and how to write jokes. And I was like, I know this already. <laughs> like, I know how to, I've, I've watched com comedy for years. I know how to write a joke. I know how to deliver a joke. So for me, it wasn't um, that useful. I actually enjoy hearing stuff I already know, in actually to confirm confirm it maybe yeah. once in a while. Yeah, but could I, help. Yeah, it could help in like seeing it done. But just you know, I was for me there just maybe the comedy class I did, um, you know, wasn't the best. But it was just like I got up and I did my jokes, and they were like, "That's funny." And I was like, mm -hmm. "Okay, <laughs> yeah, thank and you." Like, like, I need, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need more. Um, I think it's it's it's, it's Self-taught, like comedy, um, or at least for me, I find it is, you know, obviously you listen to uh, advice given by other comedians, the ones you respect, and, you know, you ignore the advice of the ones you don't. And also, like, you can have comedians that you respect, but if you don't, if you want a different sort of career from then and you do a different type of comedy, you have to take that advice with a pinch of salt. Like, people ask me for advice all the time. And I'm like, I can only give you advice if you want to be a comedian like I am. Otherwise, go listen to other because I'll tell you not. I'll tell you not to do panel shows. I'll tell you, you know, that you've got to do a new hour every year. That you've got to go on the road and you've got to do that. Whereas other comedians, I'll tell you that 
uh, what worked for them, which is they wrote for panel shows and they wrote for sitcoms and that's how their writing got better and then that. So it, it, yeah, every, I would always say get advice from the ones you admire. Um, yeah, it just you need confirmation bias. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever makes you feel better. You talked about panel shows and acting and what do you want to do on long term? I'm, I'm really curious because uh, George Carlin actually did only stand-up comedy. You're actually now doing uh, one special every, every year. Mm. Um, do you have time for anything else? Do you want to do anything, anything else? I've, I've enjoyed um, acting in the past and I, 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 I don't enjoy panel shows that much just because I'm not good at them. Like I'm, I, and I also don't want to be a person, I don't, I don't want to be famous for being on television. Like I want to be famous because I'm good at stand-up. Mm -hmm. And I also, like, that's the only, I, I got into stand-up because I love stand-up comedy. And, the, like, I know comedians, they get into it, to, you know, get into acting to become TV presenters and whatever, and I've respect to them. That is not why I, I do this. I do this because I love standing on stage in front of an audience. So th this is what I want to do for the next 10, 15, 20 years. New show every year, take on the road, because I, I want to be considered one of the greatest comedians of all time when I die. And that takes... 30, 40 years of, of graft, of just work. Like, it's not, you know, unless you are a prodigy, like, you know, Bo Burnham and, 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 and You're stuff. pretty close. <laughs> I, thank you, but it, his is a, 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 a different, his is so deep and so, I'm getting there, and you know, I, I'm not, like, that's not me being like, I'm not as good. I, I actually actually saw, saw your, uh, your show, I think it was two years ago, I think it was Dark. Mm. I saw it in Edinburgh. And yeah. uh, after all the shows I saw there, I actually saw a lot of comedians. Yeah. When I came back home here, I actually said to everybody, you should see Daniel Sloss. Mm -hmm. Many people didn't know yeah. uh, about you here, yeah. actually in Bucharest, not, not really. Well, But uh, it was the, the, the show I enjoyed, enjoyed most and the biggest surprise for me. I actually oh, didn't know that you. much. Yeah, well, th thank you very much. That, but that's, yeah, <laughs> that's the other thing I um, find a bit annoying about the little... Uh, sort of the television I do, obviously Conan and the sports I do are great, but whenever people go, can I watch your stuff online? I'm like, yeah, but please don't. Like, it's so different to what I do on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can do television spots, but they're five, ten minutes of routine, whereas my stuff is my, is my hour. It's this, you know, I talk at you for 75 minutes and it's opinion and it all ties together. And it's way darker. Yeah, yeah. On, on in live than it is on because I can say anything on stage. I can't say anything on television. How how was Conan for the first time? Oh, it was amazing! Like it was the whole time for you, the whole experience, and actually also Conan Bryan. How how was? Uh, when I got booked for it, it was one of those ones. Um, like I remember flying over to America, just being like, just not allowing myself to get excited about it because I was like, it might not happen. It could still fall through, you could still get pulled. Um, and the whole time, you know, doing the warm-up gigs and stuff, being like, still might not happen, not allowing myself to get excited. And then we got to the studio and went through the run-through, and I was like, it could still get pulled, it could still get pulled. And then Nelson Mandela died, and I was like, that's why I'm going to get pulled in the fucking Nelson Mandela, and I can't even complain, because it's fucking Nelson Mandela, and he's done so much. But then it was fine, they just did a little segment on him. Um, but yeah, it was just like, It was probably the first time in a while that I'd been not necessarily nervous, but like apprehensive. Mm -hmm. Like I just worried that like, if I, because I never worry about my sets. I never think, overthink them at any point. But you just sat backstage for two hours, just go and they, they don't let you leave. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I was yeah, a bit apprehensive, but then it was just, it's one of the sweetest fucking gigs in the world. And Conan's one of the nicest men. Um, Yeah, and ever since then he's been incredibly supportive, and that's why I've got yeah, to go back yeah, on. He's so, done it a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, so yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah, been it's been a joy. Yeah. Also, uh, talking about Conan, uh, you also did the late late show with Craig Ferguson. Yeah, I did, yeah. 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 How, did, how how is he? How how was he? I, I love his whole comedy. It's, it's my favorite late show. Was he's, um, yeah well, with Don Rickles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don Rickles was on that episode. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get to talk to no. uh, Don. That was another one when yeah because. Uh, Don Rickles talks a lot, like he's, mm -hmm. and on the show they were like, we might have to cut your segment if Don overruns. And, I'm, and the part of me is like, I fucking love Don Rickles and I want to hear everybody says, but the other part of me is like, shut the fuck up though. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I need this television more than you do. <laughs> 
you said you quit your jokes, but you, if you were to quit all jokes, is there any joke you love most that you wouldn't want to give away? Um, when I say I give up jokes, I mean, like, I'll, I'll still do jokes from four or five years ago in club sets. Yeah. Like, when I do my best of stuff, um, yeah, there's, there's some jokes I don't think I'll drop for a while because I love before. I've got one of my atheist jokes. Um, which is a joke I'm still proud of and I love performing it mm -hmm. because it gets such a mixed reaction and I enjoy that. Did any, any, any of these jokes get you in trouble? Yeah, uh, yeah. But in, pretty um, big trouble? Yeah, I had a gun pulled on me in uh, Indiana. I'd call that pretty big trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it was really cool. He didn't aim it at me. He just let me know that he had a gun because I was making jokes about there being no God and that upset him. Whoa. Yeah. And I don't think he was going to actually shoot me. I think it was just like... You know, Americans, everyone's got guns, which is a bit of banter, but obviously, as someone who's never seen a gun before, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. So I didn't tell that joke anymore that weekend. Oh, that weekend. <laughs> yeah, that we Oh, no, I've told it since. Yeah. yeah, like, I've told that joke in uh, fucking Poland, and it's like 95% Catholic. Yeah, here it's uh, Orthodox. Yeah. So it's uh, like huge percent of people are yeah, but, but the, the thing religious. Is, yeah, 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 yeah. But none of them will be in that audience. Like, that's, that's, the, thing, yeah, that's yeah. the thing about comedy. It's like, it's, I, I, I get such a biased view of uh, countries over here. Like, when, I, when we were in a Slovenia four years ago, I'm doing all my pro-gay material, mm -hmm. and it's getting huge laughs. So I'm like, oh, so gay marriage is legal here. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. And it's like, because obviously none of the... None of the bigots are at my show. None of the, you know, uh, non-English speaking, yeah. racist sort of ones, homophobic ones are going to be attending the comedy show. My comedy base in, um, in, in mainland Europe is, you know, people who are on the internet a lot and comedy fans and fluent English speakers, which requires a certain level of intelligence yeah. and education. Yeah. I actually did a, did a joke, uh, I do, uh, I have a new joke about legalizing uh, gay marriage. Is it illegal here? Uh, it's, it's illegal. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, I do it in Bucharest and it gets, uh, I say who, who's here uh, who wants to legalize gay marriage. And uh, usually one or two people, the most, yeah. at, at most. And over here I did last night a wait, show. Only, wait, one or two, only one or two people? One or two they, people from, let's say, 150. They want it or they don't want it? They want it. Oh, Jesus Christ, okay. It, it was like that. And uh, last night we had, uh, we had a couple of more. I think it was like 30% over here in, in Cluj. It was uh, a lot better. Then, uh, That's still sad. <laughs> <laughs> but mind you, like, yeah, it is. It yeah, because it's going. It's happening in Australia right now. They've got that big fucking postal vote to legalize gay marriage. Australia, the country that used to be one of the most liberal countries on the planet, it's yeah, it's very weird. But then again, the UK only fully legalized it five years ago, so I'm just a hypocritical liberal. Five years ago, it actually, it actually happened. I think it will happen here pretty soon, any it anytime will, soon. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It will unless all of the Nazis come back. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I wanted to ask you, I don't know if I already asked you, I don't think so, about your uh, writing. How do you do it? Are you the type of comedian that actually writes more on stage? Do you sit down and write it? Do you take notes and uh, develop it? And how, how do you do it? Um, it's... Uh, it depends. I remember one of the, earlier when I said always take advice from the greats. It's one of the one bits of advice that I cannot take from Bill Burr. I've tried it and it doesn't work for me. He always said, because he doesn't write down jokes before he goes on stage, because he's like, if you have a funny story to tell your friends, you don't sit outside the pub and write down what you're going to say to your yeah. friends. You just go, and that's such a good point. And I was like, fuck, that's how I'm going to do it. And then I did that. And I'm like, I'm not funny like this. <laughs> like, I just, maybe it takes more practice. I tend to, like, if I come up with a joke, sometimes I'll say something funny in conversation, or I'll say something like I'll be in an argument and I've got my opinion and I'm defending my opinion or attacking someone else's and I'll say something good and smart and I'll be like, fuck, that's, I didn't know I thought that until I just said it. So I'll take a note and then I sit down, you know, or you know, record it and then I'll type it out as much as I can, um, learn it. I'll type it out fully, but only half learn it. Mm -hmm. So just, so my brain's, con so I'm not too scripted. I write with Kai and another comedian called Gareth Wall. We sit down, we do a new material night called Work in Progress, where we just do, you know, 
an hour and a half of new stuff in between us, just fucking around. Um, so I do that, uh, just sort of learn it, go on stage, do the stuff as much as I can, record it, and then I go home and I print out the joke and I listen to it back and I do a tick on the page wherever there's a laugh mm -hmm. uh, along with the joke and then you find out where the gaps are because you can directly see how long it is between laughs and in that point you go there either needs to be a new joke there or something funny about this sentence or this sentence needs to mm -hmm. Uh, go entirely and that's how I get it ready for like the first time I'm going to take it on stage because you know, I need the joke to be da, 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 so I have confidence 90% of my stage persona is confidence and you know arrogance you know I, ca I can't trip over a word and I can't have a question in my voice when I'm doing highly opinionated stuff so yeah, I'll get the joke as ready as it can be. And then on tour, I spit most of the time, I'll write on stage. Like, once I know the skeleton of the joke, mm -hmm. and I know, I know this gets a laugh, I know this gets a laugh, and I know it ends with a laugh, then I can fuck around. Because I'm, I've always got something to fall back on. When I write material, I actually write it almost word by word. And yeah. say it or word, by, word by word. Because I'm doing one-liners. That's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, it's, yeah. it's, it's more scientific yeah. that way. You've yeah. got it, yeah, because you're you're trimming off every little bit of every fat. Every little that you word, can. every little. Yeah. yeah. What's the the joke that you love most from your set? But uh, it never gets a reaction. You it can make people uh, uh, go along with it. Um. Everybody has one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's got to be one. <laughs> um. Oh fuck. I probably. I probably cut it because I'm such a no, no. I'm very stubborn. <laughs> um, I've got a really stupid one, um, but people just—I I know why it doesn't get a laugh, just because it's such a high exaggeration. Like I enjoy—I'm opinionated on stage, and then I'll highly exaggerate my own opinion to highlight the ludicrousness of it. And sometimes that doesn't across because my persona is also very arrogant, so it just comes across as genuine. But I'm talking about. The difference between I hate pulp and, and juice and orange juice, um, but I don't mind smoothies because smoothies, you know, uh, are honest within their title. Orange juice, I suppose, yeah, basically orange juice should just call itself orange smoothie, and I'd be fine with it. And I don't trust people. I don't trust people that can't tell the difference between juice and a smoothie because if you can't tell the difference between a juice and a smoothie, how can you possibly be trusted to tell the difference between an adult and a child? Right. And it's such a, it's basically all I'm saying is if you like pulp, you're a pedophile, right? That's the whole, but it's such a, and it's such a stretch of a joke. It's just such a childish, stupid way to insult such an innocent thing. And people just go, and it's like, no, I obviously don't mean that. Like, it's such, like, I love highly exaggerated stuff, but I, I, I can't get away with it as much because a lot of the time I do mean everything I say. I make, you know, whenever I'm making points, you know, about, you know, gay marriage or drug legislation or feminism or tampon tax and stuff, I, I mean everything of that. So sometimes when I say something that I blatantly don't mean, they're like, whoa, and I'm like, ah, fuck. I, I've kind of backed myself into a corner that I don't get to be ridiculous. Is, is there anything that you haven't actually been able to pull off? Any, any, uh, Affirmation like this, uh, gay marriage to be legal, somebody should be killed, or something that y oh, you actually thought and... And then doesn't get a laugh? Um, not yet. I, like, I, I like those bits because when you, I, when you struggle, the audience don't really get it. I know what's funny. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just can't. And I know what's funny to me, right? Because I've watched stand-up so young and I know my set and I've been doing this for... 10 years and there's times when I'll think that's fucking funny and I'll do it on stage and it won't get a laugh and just that voice in the back of the head goes the audience is wrong and they might then they are and they they it's a mixture of them being wrong and me not telling it right but they are wrong like I I know comedy I know I know more about comedy than anyone in my audience because I'm obsessed with it I've, I've watched every Netflix special repeatedly I listened I don't listen to music I listen to comedy podcasts I go see I know more about comedy than 99.99% of my audience. So when a joke doesn't get a laugh and I'm like, that is fucking funny, I've just told it wrong. 
Like I know, I know the the seed is a fucking joke. I'm just giving it the wrong type of water and it's in the wrong type of soil. And that's a very fun game. Because sometimes I say stuff that's really shit. Like I know the opinion is that exaggerated and controversial and stuff, but it's just that trying to get it to work, but you can feel the audience pulling back. Like I've, I've got a bit at the moment that we're trying to, I'm trying to work on, which is about gender neutral toilets and just, and you know, transgender people. And it's like, why, why does anyone care when you sh wear your shit? Like, cause like I've, the whole thing is that I don't understand the outrage for gender neutral toilets. Like it doesn't affect me in any fucking way. But obviously talking about an issue that is not mine is a minefield to go through. Mm -hmm. you, if I, especially if I'm doing a joke, which is pro-trans rights, I've got to make sure that I use every single word, correct term and whatnot, because the worst thing about liberal audiences is a lot of the time they won't listen. They'll hear one word that you've said wrong yeah. and they'll ignore the rest of the joke. You said transvestite as opposed to transsexual. And you're like, yes, I did, and I fucked up. But could you listen to the rest of the fucking joke when I'm? Cl and it's also, you know, people always say that's not your fight, and I go, I, no, it's not my fight. I'm not doing it as a fight. I am the audience. Come to see my opinions. These are my opinions. You don't have to agree with them. I would be shocked if you agreed with my opinions. And if you know, I don't mind if you're laughing at my joke because my opinion is stupid or it's ignorant or I've tripped around it. But you've got to make sure that also the ignorance isn't harmful i guess i had a bit where i said uh, you should make uh, fun you should be able to make fun of dead people people that died yeah. pretty soon because uh, everybody we actually do make fun of them there was a whole argument about that yeah. and um, there was a guy in the audience came uh, uh, came to answer the show and he said i wanted to break a bottle on your head because you said that somebody close to him died uh, recently what does, but, he, but does, then he, does said, he think he's fucking unique but then he said but you were right. Yeah. That rarely happens. Mm. That happens pretty... Yeah, people take... Yeah. Yeah, that's a fucking weird one. I, I always hate when people get offended by stupid things. Like, I understand if you get offended by comedians who, you know, are out to offend you. But I've, I've got my last joke in my show this year is about... Uh, I was, I, I found out that I was groomed when I was 13, but I found out as an adult, like nothing happened. But the police came around to my house and told me that I'd been groomed and I was like, no, I wasn't. And they're like, no, you were. Mm -hmm. And they showed me internet conversations. And so, and it, so the whole, sh the whole joke's me talking about that. And I had, I've got people being like, pedophilia is never funny. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> like I, at no point, the joke is about pedophilia. We're not laughing at pedophilia. We're laughing at the joke about pedophilia. And if you don't get that, you are thick as shit. You are just not, it, and it happens so often um, with jokes. I, I did the show about my sister. My sister had yeah. cerebral palsy. I had people who had cerebral palsy in the audience at points. I had people who had other disabilities. I had people who had carers or related to or married to her, who were involved with disabilities. None of them ever offended. I did the show 150 times. No complaint from anyone related. One complaint from one woman whose best friend's brother was disabled. Best friend wasn't there, brother wasn't there, she was. Told me I couldn't talk about my sister the way I talked about my sister. Wow. Yeah. You, you categorically do not get to be offended on behalf of other people. It is not your fucking battle. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, hope to see you. Oh, we'll be, we'll be back next year. And every next year you'll, you'll come to Bucharest also. Yeah, uh, well, we want to add more on but it's it's at the moment we do six six weeks uk tour and three weeks in uh, three and a half weeks in europe and obviously i'm very aware that the uk is in europe that's just how we describe the tour <laughs> the uk tour is in the uk the european tour is the rest of europe people be like you're in the uk i know we are i know we are it's just easy for us it's just so much easier to, when i say the european tour i mean the one that's in the rest of fucking europe <laughs> For the time being, because our stupid fucking public for free breakfast, Brexit even. Um, but I want to, I want I, I would rather the the European tour was six weeks in the UK one. I'm bored of touring in the UK. Mm -hmm. There's, it's, it's very saturated market in the UK. There's 30 comedians on tour at the same time that I'm on tour. And they're great comedians and they've got tele, higher television profiles and, you know, people can't go see 30 shows a month. So they, you know, pick their things, the comedians they like more. I'm absolutely fine with it, but... 
you know, we're one of the, we're some of the first people to come out and do this in Europe, and we're loving it. Like, I'd much rather spend, I would much rather gig to 50 people in Bucharest than I would gig to 50 people in Bradford. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's the th that's the I, thing. I, we're, I'd, I'd rather do it the other way around, but yeah, <laughs> because I'm sick of. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. But we we want to we are working on expanding it. Um, it's a slow growth because we want to make sure that we come back to each place we've gone to to make sure that we are building an audience there. Um, because I just I want to do this for the next 15, 20 years. How was it here last year? It was great. It was our first time here, and we didn't know what to expect. Every time you go to a new place, you're like, "What's gonna like? What is this audience like?" Mm -hmm. uh, and again, always you, you're dumbass inherent. Doesn't matter how British you are. If you're a white British person, you're, you've just got a little bit of racism in your head. And it's not it's not hate based racism. It's ignorant yeah. based racism. Okay. I'll be like, "How are these people gonna understand what I'm saying?" And I'm like, of course they do. Of course they do. I just assume that the rest of the world is as stupid as British people are. So, but doesn't matter, doesn't matter how many times it happens, every time I go to a new city, I'm like, they're not gonna understand it. And then Kai goes on stage with his thick accent and they get it straight away. I'm like, I'm the worst human being. <laughs> and the, the last year as well, we were in like a first time here, 300 seats sold, and it's just mind blowing. I, I actually love the, the audience in this part of the country. Uh, as yeah. I said, they more, they're more open to, yeah. to stuff. Even then, more than in Buc Bucharest, which is the, the capital city. Yeah. But uh, don't go to <laughs> uh, Moldova. That's another area. Oh, to go to Moldova? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. It's like people are going to hear me. It's like Texas. It's something like. <laughs> okay. It's, oh, but then again, I do love this. There's the best types of gigs are not the ones when a hundred percent of the audience love you. The best gigs are when 90% of the audience and 10% fucking hate you. There's nothing better than watching someone who hates your show. They hate you. They don't, you've upset them early on. They hate it, but they're surrounded by people laughing and they don't understand why. And they're just like, this isn't funny. Why is everyone laughing? This is, I love that. I fucking stare them out. I work out what joke upset them. I'm like, oh, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. That actually happened to me in Sofia, yeah. uh, where you're going next. Uh, yeah. It was a guy, it was a big guy, bald, bald headed, yeah. with a pink shirt. He's, he was like that the whole show, the whole show, nothing, yeah. nothing. I couldn't get nothing from him. But uh, I enjoyed it. That's the greatest thing. You... Uh, also, uh, last time I had a joke, uh, what was it? There's a Romanian tradition uh, where all, I don't think it, anybody does that anymore, uh, to prove that the uh, new wife, at, at, marriage, at, the, at marriage, the new wife is a virgin. Uh, the groom, mm -hmm. after the, having sex for the first, first time, he comes out and shows the sheets dirty. With oh, blood. okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, I can't wait for the first gay marriage. Great. For a guy to come out and show the shits. Yeah. <laughs> it actually works better. <laughs> uh, and I didn't have, I didn't get a laugh last night. That's because they got, hate you know gay people. No. You know what I got? I got an oh and a round of applause. Oh, oh yeah. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, you get, a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's what, 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 what do I understand for that? I'm surprised it didn't go down well in a homophobic country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was weird. Yeah. Well, thank you again. No, thank you very Sorry much for keeping you that much. No, good, uh, perfect timing because the doors are about to open. So, sweet. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.